Hello and welcome to your GG Replay for Friday, August 27th, 2021. GG Replay is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday show where we break down the latest in gaming news for you. Hosted by us, the Goodnight Groofs. A place for games and a place for goofs. Still, we're workshopping the slogan, but we're getting there, I swear. <laughs> My name is Paul, and that chuckling you can hear in the background, that is Mike. Uh, normally we have Matt here, but Mike is here filling in uh, as both co-host and audio production engineer today um mike you want to yeah, you're you're killing it i want you oh, to know you have everything but your own audio we we recorded half the show already i will say <laughs> but everything but mike's audio went through but my audio was amazing so thank you it mike immaculate. it was amazing <laughs> immaculate so now we just got to get yours on board and we're totally there exactly. um, how are you doing on this friday are you feeling ready for the weekend yeah, I am so ready for the weekend. It has been a long week. A lot of group stuff this week, actually. And yeah, yeah, it's just been nonstop go. It's been good to actually, you know, get things churning. So yeah, absolutely. Really, really cool. We did a great opening night live stream on uh, Wednesday, which was great. Um, we have also for those of you at home, if you want to see our hot takes from that, there is a VOD on our Twitch uh, twitch.tv slash goodnightgroofs, but also on YouTube, there's like kind of like an hour of a super cut. Uh, we tried to cut down as best we could, but you know, there's just so many, uh, so many great trailers and so much great stuff uh, from us that we have to say. Uh, so we put that on YouTube for you as well. And that's getting some heat actually right now. We're getting a lot of comments mainly about our, our takes on Doke V, uh, which we will talk about more <laughs> later in this episode. But because uh, we know y'all out there are interested in hearing about us talk about Doke V, apparently. Because it's getting has a lot of comments on on the old YouTube. Um, all right, Mike. I, I, I promised Matt uh, getting into this episode that I would get some soda facts. I did not get any soda facts for this episode because I am... Uh, well, Matt, I'm sure Matt's listening right now and going, yeah, I know you didn't. I know you did. I knew you wouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't even read the outline when you wrote it, did you? Um, so no, I didn't get any soda facts. Um, I did ask you last time. I'll ask you again, Mike. Um, what is your favorite pop as we say up here in the north of north america yes my uh favorite pop uh dr pepper or any of the variants uh mr pib is also okay um but yeah mr dr. pib is okay okay yeah yeah um wow. if if it's available i'd take that over you know pepsi or anything like that but Fair enough. do um, you know what they call it pib extra now i believe yes yes yeah um but yeah dr pepper for sure coke or diet coke if if not but yeah yeah you like that syrupy syrupy dark soda kind of thing going on i oh, feel yeah. like i'm more of a sprite guy i don't really uh drink a lot of uh soda pap but i do like uh i do like a little bit of sprite sometimes you know what i got and i people say this is just disgusting but you know um i don't know if you guys have the at the movie theaters we have sometimes these like big coke machines where you can like yep. pick all your favorite you can like make whatever drink you want uh and we have them other places too but we have them at the movie theater and uh i got vanilla sprite once that and sound good. i i loved it it was so good it was like the refreshing sprite flavor but also like yeah. a little bit of sweet in there um it was very nice i would i would i would get that again they didn't have water at the time i was like really no water uh so i got a vanilla sprite and that uh did not fill the place of water i will say if i were in the desert uh and i was i was dying i might I might just die instead of drinking <laughs> vanilla Sprite. Not very thirst quenching in the way you might imagine, um, but tangy. So you know, if I tangy. felt if I felt ta if I felt like I needed a little bit of sweet tang mm, in the desert. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, this is a gaming podcast, Mike. This is a gaming podcast. Um, and just before we get into it, uh, as we're already getting a little off the rails here, uh, just to remind everyone, if you come across any necessary corrections in today's episode, send them to ggreplayshow at gmail.com or put the YouTube or put your correction in the YouTube comments below so we can address them in the next episode because, you know, this thing's going to be rife with mistakes. I'm telling you right now, if you're, if you're listening at home, get your, get your red pens out. Uh, I doubt it. I think we're I think we're pretty good. I think we know these games. All right, <laughs> Mike. The reviews are in. They're in, my friend. There's one. There's one review that has <laughs> so enough one review. uh, reviews. <laughs> so one review. The review is in. Uh, probably didn't need to yell. It was fine. Uh, <laughs> no more Heroes Three. I think a lot of us uh, forgot this game was coming out. 
uh, unless you are a diehard No More Heroes fan. And in which case, this game is tailor-made for you. Got a 79 on Open Critic. It is out today. Uh, and I'll tell you, it is uh, just a, it is another No More Heroes game. It looks kind of like a PS2 game. It has a lot of the same mechanics, a lot of the same boss fights. It is another No More Heroes game, and they did not innovate at all. This is this is the same thing, um, but but new and more, uh, which is great uh, for a lot of people. I think as you as you, it's funny you can see the reviews as you go from like Japan and you go further west. The reviews are like 79, 76, 72, like <laughs> and people who are like, oh, I want more of my favorite genre, my favorite game, sorry, my favorite franchise, No More Heroes. So, uh, Mike, what do you think? Did you have you ever played No More Heroes? I played the first one, didn't really touch the second one, um, didn't get very far in the first one either. It, it was out on the Wii, used the Wii controls. Um, mm-hmm. It was very uh, campy. Um, lots of lots of dirty humor uh i remember saving the game required you to go take a shit on a toilet and um you know saves my game (laughs) your weapon was a uh was like a lightsaber but it had to charge up and in order to charge it you had to shake the wii remote like a shake weight um and travis would bend over and posture it between his legs while he does it naturally Uh, naturally um yeah but it's great it has you know a lot of fourth wall breaking a lot of almost deadpool like humor Mm -hmm. um it and honestly you know a 79 is pretty admirable for a game especially one that they didn't change much um and in my mind if it's just like no more heroes the first one um that's more of a good thing so yeah and interestingly enough we did get news from the dev today saying as well this is the last no more heroes game we're getting uh no this may not be disappointing this may not be fine you know a final you know maybe someone else will take on the mantle or this you know in a few years five ten years we might see something more i mean we've waited a long time for no more heroes three it's been over 10 years since the last like numbered uh, iteration so mm-hmm. uh you know um but yeah it, it feels as though possibly seeing the results of this game it was maybe hard for them to really make a change and get it to run on the hardware the way they wanted it to um maybe there was there might have been internal change you know internal fight about like trying to make it yeah you know uh true to the old style but maybe having to make it newer unsure it looks like they made the game that they faithfully wanted to re uh to kind of recreate the original style and continue and make another proper third trilogy numbered uh uh, in, uh entry but yeah yeah anyway it's it's interesting to see a little disappointing but also when it takes your game like 11 years to come out for a sequel <laughs> i don't know maybe this is it maybe we just call it and go hey we did it be happy we did it <laughs> and that's it it is kind of wild that these PS2 games are coming out now. You got that. You got the yeah. Super Monkey Psychonauts Ball game. too. <laughs> yeah, we got Psychonauts 2 coming out too now, which is yeah. pretty crazy too, which is obviously not a P- they've innovated. Um yes. but it still is, you know, it's like this is we this game came out in like 2005 uh and now we're yeah. just getting like a a sequel, which is pretty crazy. So interesting to see. All right, moving on to some more modern games here, possibly. We have uh, Halo Infinite. They're really going for modern. Uh, We just got news today from Twitter that there will not be a traditional XP system in the Halo multiplayer. So just challenges to level up the Battle Pass. This was confirmed on Twitter by the 343 Community Manager. Um, interesting, interesting take. Um, you know, obviously challenges are fine, I think. And, and I think there's, you can make them pretty simple so that they're not hard. It's not like going to necessarily be like do a backflip while you're rocketing someone. I mean, those might be challenges for sure, <laughs> but they'll probably also be like get 10 kills, you know, get like how many beat downs or how many headshots, right? So that, it's not the worst thing, but it does make you wonder a little bit, uh, just in general about, uh, xp you know i mean this could take as i was thinking this could take people a little bit off the beaten path if these do get a little bit complicated or confusing maybe people will spend more time trying to complete the challenges than trying to complete the task at hand which is you know winning the game um and will that happen all the time hard to say i I think a traditional xp system would have been good um so that we could you know just progress even if you're terrible at the game if you can't get 10 you know headshots you know, who cares? You're playing the game. You paid for the battle pass. I think you should, you know, be reasonably able to somehow progress and get some cosmetics from that. Not a big deal. Mike, what do you think? Yeah, um, I'm kind of in the same vein. I think it's weird. Um, 
I like the, the idea of challenges for a battle pass is fine, but the fact that you're taking XP out of the system, it makes me question what the unlockable system is going to be like, how much it's going to be, you know, behind the battle pass, because I'm assuming you have to pay for it. Um, and it's just odd, because, uh, you know, you people want to see progress after they finish a game. You know, if you don't finish any yeah. of your challenges, then you finish a game and there's just like no little meter going up, no nothing. Oh, is yeah. there going to be a ranking system? Like how how is any of this going to work without traditional yeah. XP? Um, again, I don't think it's a terrible thing. I just think it's a weird decision. Uh, maybe they'll innovate on the space. Maybe it'll be something completely different that makes more sense and is way more interesting. I don't know. But um, in regards to the challenges, as long as they're generic, I think it's okay. I know like certain yeah. games like Dead by Daylight has an uh, issue. It's not really an issue, but when when a new page for the Rift challenges comes out, usually the first day or two or even week, um, <laughs> has you know people just kind of cheesing to get the challenges done some of them are like you know vault over a pallet 15 times and then you see a survivor yeah. just vaulting back and forth um some of them are killer based where a killer has to do a certain thing to a to a survivor and you'll see a survivor just standing there and letting the killer do whatever they need to do it's yeah it doesn't detract from uh the overall experience but you do get like a game where you're just like okay so i guess i'm gonna farm whatever challenge i have and go from there yeah um it's not like a big issue for dead by daylight i don't see it being a big issue for halo infinite it's just an odd design decision mm -hmm. yeah that's a worry for me and, and that's kind of what i'm thinking about it, it actually reminds me a little bit i just don't love when developers kind of tell you how they want you to play multiplayer and i understand yeah. kind of corralling people a little bit or, or wanting to have it because just to have people in a big space and have an event space look at like something like Fortnite where they want to you know try to get everyone to watch the concert or to go to the the short movie festival they try to get everyone uh corralled to a certain event but they don't make you they don't like turn well actually that's not true in Fortnite they do actually turn off i think during the concerts they do turn off the the, the shooting and i don't like that either um but they are short they're like it's like a 15 minute live concert then you can play again um, but that re reminds me of like when I played Realm Royale for a little bit, actually, Matt and I have gotten to playing that a little bit. And there was a weekend we were trying to introduce our friend uh, to also play it with us. And we we're like, we actually had so much fun with Realm Royale. This is a lot of fun. Come play it. And he came in on Friday night. He just, you know, got off work. We'll play all weekend. And it was sniper only weekend. All you, the entire weekend, the only <laughs> weapon available was sniper rifles. Is that interesting? Yes, it's interesting. But also, y trying to introduce someone new to the game where you get off and that's your only, you know, you can't play all week, you play on the weekend, and then you're like, oh, I'm stuck with sniper rifles. Kind of kind of stinks. Yeah. Uh, and I obviously that's a Realm Royale issue, but I'm just saying uh, it it's, it's interesting when you see developers, you know, how far do you take it to kind of corral people? You know, like you said, one day or maybe it's even a couple, like a, a couple, a couple days or a week of... of Dead by Daylight, where everyone's kind of like not everyone, but certainly a lot of you can definitely catch people doing cheesy things. Um, that does that can take away a week where everyone's kind of focusing on doing you know something that isn't quite the game. It's fun because you see everyone doing the same thing, but also it can be a little it can take away if you just want to play the regular game loop. So I, yeah. I wonder how that's going to go with Halo. I think it's too early to tell um, how this is going to shake out. They're really trickling the information of how multiplayer is really going to feel and work in the systems behind it, especially when we're only a few months away. But we'll have to see. Um, I'm still optimistic that that 343 is is taking multiplayer very seriously this time. Yeah, I feel like every time we get information about Halo Infinite, I just end up with more questions about Halo Infinite, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is worrisome when it comes out in like a couple months. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that is a problem. <laughs> but whatever, I'm sure it'll, at least the multiplayer should be fine. Um, it's true. It's true. We won't uh, and talk in terms about of the, the campaign. <laughs> I was going to say, we won't talk about the campaign. The campaign has its own issues. Um, yeah. I remember seeing that great multiplayer trailer at uh, Opening Night Live with the story for the multiplayer. And we were like, okay, like, oh, why is so this good. the campaign? This looks so cool. Like yeah. someone being like saved by Spartans, becoming a Spartan. What a cool story. <laughs> That actually would be a lot more interesting than Chief's, you know, <laughs> fifth time around trying to deal with Cortana going rampant and then not going rampant. All right, Mike, you know what the Halo campaign does not have? As I was just saying, it doesn't have George R. R. Martin. 
Uh, you know what? They have never confirmed George R. R. Martin for Halo. That's kind of very true. Guys, but, <laughs> but From Software has gotten George R. R. Martin. <clears throat> but as news today comes out, the in-game text is not being written by George R. R. Martin. It is being written by Miyazaki, like every other From Software game. So this is interesting. Uh, I think a lot of people initially got a little bit confused, thinking that George R. R. Martin was going to be a bigger hand in this game. But he's really more of an inspiration. It, it, the, the sounds of it, uh, he came in did some meetings, helped, uh, you know, flesh out the world building, but ultimately was not the writer of the game, which in a lot of ways might be good um, because, you know, he's not known for finishing uh, his writing projects. He hasn't really been on the writing game for a while now. Not huge shade of George R. R. Martin, but also kind of a little bit, man, because we never <laughs> finished. We want to read the end of Song and Ice and Fire. I swear you can do it better than D&D. <laughs> uh what do you what do you think mike i, I think uh i think for people like me um you know we were kind of thinking that this was going to be maybe a little bit different than other from software games it might be a little more george R. R. martin e uh, a little more traditional fantasy and it comes out being a little more of you know this eastern inspired um you know darker kind of twisted world you know the, the classic souls dark souls kind of look um and that's great i think a lot of people are really excited but for people like me you know, I'm kind of disappointed that it's not going to be a little bit more more different. Um, what's your take on this, though, Mike? Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised by how little uh, George R. R. Martin had to do with it. I know when he came out, they said that he was just doing the world building. I didn't expect him to do much else. Uh, and honestly, like you said, it's probably a good thing because that means we actually get an Elden Ring release. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm and I'm honestly the announcement of George R. R. Martin being uh, a part of Elden Ring didn't make much sense to me to begin with. R. R. Yeah. Martin is a huge, you know, character author. He's very yes. good at fleshing out characters. He's also very good yep. at wor world building through his characters and then making those characters feel realistic and that they have, you know, motivations and they act upon those motivations and, you know, they do things that make sense with their characters. Yeah. Um, Souls games don't really have a lot of character development. <laughs> yeah. So um, it would have just been weird. I'm very okay with it not being written by him. Um, and it, I, I don't think the game will be lacking because of it. Yeah, see, that's, I think, the thing that was, was it for me. I like a little bit more of that character story, and I guess I was thinking with Martin being involved, maybe we would get a little bit more characterization. We might see a From Software game where they go out of the comfort zone a little bit and make something that's a little more character-driven. I thought that might have been kind of interesting to see. You know, as a, as a diversion, obviously, they're still going to make mainline games that aren't that, but it would have been kind of cool to see a little offshoot where it's more character-based. Um, and they didn't, which is fine, and I, and I think that's going to do extremely well, and Elden Ring is going to be well-received by all accounts. Um, but yeah, for someone like me who doesn't typically play those games, was looking forward to seeing what they would do if they tackled it a little bit differently. But that's okay. Not for me. As Matt and I said on another uh, podcast where we talked about uh, the the announcement for Summer Games Fest and the, and the trailer from Elden Ring. You know what? Didn't really wow us. Um, but this game is not for us. Not every game is for us. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be killer. I think it's going to be amazing. Um, it reminds me actually of, uh, I, oh God, I can't for the life of me remember it. It's in the notes somewhere from like a past replay, but there was a company, <laughs> there was some like no name developer who partnered with an author uh, recently or something like that. Oh, I can't remember exactly what the story was, but it was, Matt and I were just talking about it and we were like, what, like, what's the point? Like the only reason they would even partner with this author was just to go like, hey, uh, here's the big yeah. name that we got. Uh, you know, and they can, and they're going to help us flesh out this new world. And it's like, okay, great. But like, who are you and what are you making? And like, why does, why should I care? Like, uh, you know, it's kind of ridiculous, especially when you have someone who's not really a video game author in any way. And I, obviously video games are a medium and not a story, but still, you know, I think it takes a certain kind of mind sometimes to really craft a good video game, uh, narrative. And I feel like R.R. R. Martin was a weird choice to imagine, uh, you know, uh, uh, that he would really have much more of a a place than just kind of building the world and, and helping yeah. kind of build the story out a little bit. No, I agree with you on that because the, there's, there's writing a story and then also being able to, you know, have a story that you can portray through gameplay and whatnot. Like there's, yeah. there's a little bit extra art that goes through it. I don't think any author can just write a video game story. They can write a good story. I just yeah. don't think that you have to have it parallel with the game play aspects in order yep. for it to work 
it's it's Absolutely. like it's like an artist using the wrong canvas type or the wrong paint type yeah. like yeah you can't just give anyone oil paints and say hey go paint something <laughs> exactly right if their medium is something else yeah. um and, and i i also think it was a little weird too i just wanted to, to touch on this but i thought it was kind of weird to get our martin for world building too when i think that's the thing that arguably these games do best is is building this kind of this yeah. lore in this background world without characters just kind of building this world in the background where you find objects and it tells you more about the world and location and i'm like miyazaki and the from software team do such a good job with that this is not who you need to get to help you don't need help like this is kind of <laughs> it really felt like a, a, a pr get because i just feel like it's not necessary for them almost like maybe maybe martin was like oh i want to get into a game like maybe he's like oh i'd like to try gaming and then like they were like oh cool i guess we'll like bid on getting you to help us or something like if you're looking to get into some games like we'll put your name on a project i don't yeah. know it's 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 strange but uh i just feel like yeah if they wanted to go character that might have been something they could have used some help with maybe because it's not something they've done but that's why i was a little shocked too because it just feels like that's who yeah you would get martin to do world building if you weren't already extremely good at world building which is like oh, okay cool a couple of buds just like i feel like it was a couple of buddies just like bouncing great ideas off each other and being like i'm a fan of you i'm a fan of you you did a great job let's uh <laughs> add some i don't know when you pick up this spider egg it'll like tell you a story cool awesome all right but anyway, i think that's i the... think if i wanted george R. R. martin to write for a video game i think i would prefer him for like i don't know a dragon age game i think that I was would be just gonna amazing. say dragon age would be so <laughs> good yeah uh like a dragon age origins or something uh redo yeah with uh with uh, George R. R. Martin would be really good because again, it's like those like the impacts of of the story and the character that really feels like it uh, it works so well. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what we did talk about that we talked about from software and Elden Ring and how that is probably going to be well received no matter who is writing the story, either Miyazaki or George R. R. Martin. I'm sure would do well, but it's Miyazaki. It's gonna be great. But you know, there's something that came out this week that is not necessarily going to be received well, at least if you listen to the hordes of online fans. Now, we uh, at Opening Night Live, we did an Opening Night Live co-stream. Um, we have the VOD on our Twitch, twitch.tv slash goodnightgroups. And we also have a YouTube video up where we have hot takes. Now, Matt, Mike, and I all thought the new Saints Row reveal actually looked pretty good. Um, looked fun. It looked like an interesting game. It seemed to match the tone between the new games and the older games and kind of blend that together in a good way. But that is not how the internet feels about that. And I, I think you at home, if you're listening to this, you probably might also be like, what the heck is this guy talking about? This looked terrible. <laughs> so there's a lot of people out there um, who are, especially Saints Row fans, who, you know, Saints Row 2 was such a mainstay in the franchise, and a lot of people feel like that. It was the pinnacle, and you're probably right in the general scheme, but, you know, it was a little bit grittier, a little bit less cartoonish and, and goofy. Um, certainly, it still had that aspect, but probably more to the degree that, like, like Grand Theft Auto does. Um, and they, you know, clearly have leaned in more to the goofiness and the cartoonish aspects in 3 and 4, and that seems to be where Volition wants to take it. Now, um, you know, people are kind of unhappy. They said that the new one looks kind of generic, looks like it could be any game, looks like the characters are a little too hipstery, not not street enough or whatever you want to say. Um, so, you know, people are talking about this a lot in Volition tweeted in response to this backlash saying we're not backing down on this game we get it it's new and it's a shock reaction to a reboot like no other they are saying this this is what we think is is you're just shocked you have to let it sink in this is what it's going to be and you're gonna like it um now interesting reveal we see more in the world of games getting you know things getting pushed back you know people see the new sonic and they they shriek and they have to go back and fix it halo <laughs> we saw the brute we have that brute meme everyone says we gotta redo halo infinite this looks like garbage <laughs> but saints row you know we're six months uh to the day two days ago we're six months to this coming out this is about to come out um and this is the doing the thing that matt and i often say we love matt and i are always like hey come out with your reveal like six months out from the game and say hey you like this game it's coming out in six months what a cool thing to do but if the game doesn't get good response kind of seems like it could be a detriment uh mike what do you feel about this whole debacle here and the, the and the new saints row uh do you what's your take on the whole thing well i i mean like uh I'm I'm confused by the backlash. Obviously, like I yeah. I thought it looked good when we mm -hmm. saw it. Honestly, you guys are having such harsh criticism over a game mm. that we saw all of uh, twenty seconds of gameplay yeah. and a cinematic trailer. Um, I think 
if anything, just withhold judgment until you've seen more of it. And yeah. I, I don't want my Saints Row to be gritty. I, I really yeah. don't. Because at the end of the day, it's like, are you? do you want Saints Row to go be up against GTA? Because if I want something gritty, I'm going to go play GTA. And yeah. honestly, the backlash to me feels like people just want a GTA 6 rock star. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Saints Row won't really scratch that itch, but Saints Row should scratch the Saints Row itch. Um, yes. I think Volition is doing the right thing in that they're just sticking by it. I think they're confident in their product. If they weren't confident, they wouldn't have released uh, any information so late in the game. And yeah, yeah, I I agree that like you know earlier announcements are good because then you get you know feedback from from you know fans, mm-hmm. players, etc. But you know at a certain point. You just gotta be confident in what you're doing, and if Volition yeah. thinks that this is a winner, then they should just go with it. And I'm a hundred percent back them making that decision. I can see where people think that this game looks too generic. Um, I don't know. I for still me, have people saying, "Oh, it looks like Fortnite. It looks like Fortnite characters." But I mean, we got a CG trailer, so I mean, how yeah. are you supposed to really get a full characterization of that? Uh, like, for me, when I first saw it, I think. Um, Within 10 seconds of the cinematic trailer, I said, this is Saints Row. Like, yeah. for me, it looked like Saints Row. Like, as much as, you know, you mm-hmm. want to sit there and say, well, where's Gat? Where's, where's my grittiness? It's like, yeah, it's not, it's not the same time period, even. Like, yeah. it's 2021. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get a hipster gang that looks like a startup company at this point. Yeah, that's kind of what they're going for. I think it's going for a different crowd. I think it may not yeah. appeal to all of the Saints Row 2. I think there's a lot of people who saw Saints Row 2, and there was a lot of this gang... Uh, you know, you can really take over and, and 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 take other territory. And they were kind of playing with this idea of like a gang based territory game where you really like take over the city. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't really play out 100% because of the technology and the development of the time. But but that was kind of what a lot of people thought. I think they were dipping their toes into. And then they went, nah, we're not really going to do that. We're going to make a different kind of game. And I think there's a lot of people who are still clinging to this idea that that is what Saints Row could be. And I just mm-hmm. don't think that's what Saints Row, Volition wants Saints Row to be. And I think that's why some people are disappointed. They're kind of hoping that a reboot was going to bring them to that kind of game. This like pretty gang takeover game. Um, but it just doesn't feel like this is that game. This is a, a no. goofier, more fun uh, more freewheeling GTA kind of game, open world GTA kind of game. And, and that's what it is. And that's what sets it apart from GTA. And I think uh, that's what they're going for. I think they also could have set themselves apart by doing the, the, the heavy gang interaction thing. But that's not what they're doing. Um, and I think both games are cool and valid if they made them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, there's no reason to sit here and say that they aren't doing, you know, that type of takeover type game. We well, honestly what they, don't they, know. They're saying that's what they're <laughs> saying they want to do too. They're like, oh, right. you know, we want it to be like it's all the gangs are very different, and you can take, you can like take over yeah. places from the gangs, and they are really pushing that interaction. People are like, oh, but they look like Fortnite characters, and it's like, so they can't be good. And it's like when you don't know if it can be good or not. Like the systems are, the systems are irrelevant to what the fucking CG trailer characters look like. We don't know um, what they're going to, what it's going to like shake out. Like like Matt and I said at the end, we weren't sure when we talked about it on replay on Wednesday. Um, we were still kind of like, oh, I have some reservations, but I think it looks good. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know what? Well, you know, we'll find out in six months. We have six months. It's coming out. It's not a very long period of time. There's a lot of stuff coming out um, between now and then. So you know what? It'll pop out and we'll see if we love it. There's no, you know, there's no reason to get so bent out of shape, I feel like. But, you know. Some people, the Saints Row Two uh, fans are legion, and they are <laughs> they are out there. <laughs> Apparently, um, yeah. yeah. I honestly, when I I, I get big um, uh, Watch Dogs Two vibes, and I get big yes, yeah. um, Crackdown vibes from this game. Mm-hmm. So I still like. I'm not gonna sit here and say the game's gonna be amazing because I don't know because yeah. I haven't seen yeah. any of it. <laughs> So, um, but you know, I, I'm hopeful for it. I've wanted another Saints Row game, one that's not, you know, 
as silly as playing a video game in a video game um, and being the president of the United States and being kidnapped by mm. aliens. Yeah. With superpowers. Um, yeah. With yeah. superpowers. Yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited for it. I'm looking yeah. forward to see more of it. That's all I want to yeah. do is see more. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? If y'all hate fun. I just feel Apparently. like the, the fun <laughs> character, what is he, Derek or whatever, some some crap, and he's got his like little cat helmet on, everyone's like it's a Fortnite skin, he's got his funny little Deadpool quippy lines, I had a great time, it was fun, yeah. I mean maybe, I don't know, I, I'm not saying that's like gonna be the whole game, but it was just, it was a cute little trailer, that's all, everyone relax, they're just announcing a reboot, alright, alright, moving on, that's enough, <laughs> that's enough, yelling at the, the legion of fans on the internet who will flame us, maybe that'll be another uh, comment heavy YouTube video here, alright, um, we're moving Moving on to everyone's favorite company, Activision Blizzard. We love to talk about them. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> to have a little hate chat. Um, if you, one thing uh, you'll you'll hear us say a lot in the uh, in the Call of Duty thing is just how little Activision's name was shown uh, on opening night live, and by how little I mean zero. Uh, so maybe a little <laughs> bit of a, uh, a de- departure here. So we have some news. Um, Over no Overwatch Two is still coming out in 2023. It might even be longer. Who who the heck knows? But we have some Overwatch news. Jesse McCree. Is being renamed now. We've 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 kind of we've kind of felt like this is probably going to happen for a while. Um, you know, I mean, we saw Alex Afrasiabi's characters, uh, you know, get changed. Uh, any of his self-insert characters based on his own name or his own character names have been changed. Um, and now Jesse McCree, former Blizzard employee, he was also uh, let go due to presumably, you know, um, inappropriate conduct. Um, we're seeing that name be changed. So we don't know what the name will be going forward. Um, but, uh, someone else will be announcing, uh, High Noon, uh, which is, I mean, still, still Matt Mercer, but yeah. <laughs> he'll have a different name. I think, uh, <laughs> I like the, I like what people say about, uh, him being called Mercer, I think is a cool name. Uh, I think that's maybe, a great like, name. It's kind of close to McCree too. I think it almost like works for like movement, like mouth movement for other characters, like mentioning him or something. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, so, and Blizzard also has said that they will no longer name characters after employees. Hey. Generally a good idea anyway, because it's kind of <laughs> yeah. like weird nerd god, like, like, narcissist shit anyway, to be yes. like, I am the hero. Like, very, look at the people new, doing it, people like fucking Afrasiabi naming a million characters after themselves, because it's like weird, it's weird uh, ego mm-hmm. shit to mm-hmm. be like, oh, look, all of my characters are named after me, and I built this world. But also, um, even for people who aren't like that, a lot of people, especially in gaming, only last two, three years. Employees aren't there forever. Even like, like heads right. and leads, especially nowadays, are, aren't staying at companies for a very long time. Um, so it's kind of, you know, not necessarily the best idea to name people, out, get characters after people who might not even be at your company for a while. Um, but also, huge props to the person I saw on Reddit, top, one of the top comments here, who had, who had a joke who said, uh, it's especially a good policy for Blizzard considering they have such a high probability of the employee turning out to be a massive creep that they should probably just avoid naming anyone because uh, it's very likely they'll end up being a sex offender or something to the degree. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, it's probably true. Uh, just for a smart move, just even if they're going to like keep the company exactly the same, just be like, we probably should avoid like naming people in case we have to oust them. Um, what do you think, Mike? I think it makes total sense, right? I yeah, mean, it's not a I... great policy in general. It it really isn't. It's it speaks a lot of oh, you know, this is my world. You just live in it type of deal. Yep. With wow, especially it's just weird. Yep. Um, it's very weird. I I don't know. I I'm very different. Like even when I play RPGs, I usually don't make myself because I find it weird Same. to make myself. Um, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, I'm good with McCree getting a name change. Um, yeah. It's kind of rough because McCree was probably one of the quintessential Overwatch characters. If it's not Tracer, yeah. you probably think of McCree. Um, yeah. But, you know, Mercer is a great name, honestly. I think Matt yeah. Mercer has earned the honor. Um, Absolutely. And then some. So I think yeah. that would be great. But, uh, yeah, no, just... Just get rid of that policy. Blizzard. Just get rid of that policy. Go. Ba- I think honestly, go back and change them all. Like even if even non, just go yeah. back and wipe them. Like it's just not. Like it's just get ahead of the game. I mean, I have a lot of things I could say to Activision Blizzard. None of this is going to make me really like them at this point. But I will say, just a smart move. Go back and erase them all. Because yeah. at this point, who fucking knows what's going to come? I mean, you probably already know. So go back and get rid of them. <laughs> the only problem now with getting rid of names, the people who haven't been 
um sure named or anything is it just looks like a, an implication of guilt or something yeah. to, to erase names so even if they only even if they erased every name people would be like well you know maybe they maybe it wasn't they, every name it was just the ones the people who did things so uh, yeah no they now. should they should just announce we are removing employee names from all characters yeah. and just yeah. leave it at that you know yeah. leave it for you know the immortalization of certain people and influencers yeah. and you know People that deserve it, not, you know, creeps yeah. at the office. <laughs> exactly. Like putting Michael, like putting Michael, oh my God, pardon me, putting Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. in uh, Michael, Michael Luther King Jr. Uh, putting Martin Luther King Jr. in Fortnite, you know, that's uh, yeah. that's a deserving tribute, I guess. <laughs> sure. I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know. I don't, weird. don't know. I uh, I feel like if we're talking metaverse, you know, maybe he'd be happy that he was in the metaverse. But how, who am I to say? Who am I to say? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, just, we're not even going to talk about that one today because, uh, oh, that's, fuck that's that. That's probably All good. Right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a little too uh, a little too white over here to have a conversation about that. I will say. Um, all right, all right. So we're moving on to our final story of the day. Y'all been waiting for it out there, you haters in the comments. We're talking about DoKV. Now we're not just bringing it up out of the blue. The developers did do an official developer walkthrough uh, at Gamescom 2021. They did talk a little bit more about the game. We didn't really see much more in terms of gameplay, but we did talk about their influences a lot. Um, it's interesting. Um, we see the lead developers and stuff kind of saying like, okay, yeah, what I want a game I can play with my kids and I can't think of a game that I could play with my kids. So I'm going to make this game or, oh, I want to like give you that feeling of childlike wonder. This is a lot of the things they said. One of the things, um, that they mentioned was like, oh, you know, as a child, your imagination is like you imagine the spaces that are real to you, but a little bit different, more magical. And I can see all of that stuff. And I, and I, and I felt that when watching it too, I do, I do feel that. Um, but the kids, the kids look fucked. They look bad. <laughs> they look bad. Um, I saw someone saying, and they said the, the walker, like adults did the mocap for the kids and they look like kind of, they move weird, especially when you consider that it's an adult as a kid it makes it even stranger when you see them move around. Um, they have the, maybe the, I don't want to say body, but like the shape, like the size of like a 10 year old, but their faces have kind of like a six year old, like baby kawaii baby look. Yeah. I, it's so bizarre. And I think maybe you too, Mike, but like, I know Matt said he didn't like most of it. I thought this game looked phenomenally good and fresh and weird and interesting um but those those character models really threw me yeah the 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 art aesthetic of the characters in general just weirded me out um and i know especially against had, such a realistic backdrop yeah we had a lot of people that well we had a couple comments about how you know we commented about how weird it was and well why is this weird and not pokemon when you're 10 and it's like okay but but the pokemon games when you were 10 um for the most part like those kids didn't do kid things they yeah went and did pokemon battles and you know they looked proportionately like children and then even when yeah. like sword and shield you know that's you're not you're not 10 in that i'm pretty sure yeah. you're like 13 or 14 like y Which you look more like sense, a teenager I feel like yeah um it's just it's so off-putting seeing such a like a baby face on someone that yeah. looks like they're 10 years old in body and then they're doing stuff that like you know you would expect a five or six year old to do on the playground with the like make an archway and w walk through yeah. it and clap and all that stuff. Like I, I have younger nieces. I've seen them do similar things and it's just yeah. weird. <laughs> um, it's weird. Cause they're doing this thing where like, you know, like, like the Pokemon thing, like you were mentioning 13 year olds going out and Pokemon battling, and going adventure. That almost feels like, you know, I could see being, thir being 13 and, and taking that responsibility on you. Know, 13 is, a lot sure. of times in, in a lot of different cultures, you know, seen as like a becoming a bit more older and, and, and doing taking on more responsibility. Ten, yeah. though, in the Pokemon games, ten was a little strange. But you know what? You could kind of fantasize that they're not ten. You know, when you're playing that game, you can self-insert right. a little bit because the characters weren't 100%. They didn't look like anything, really. They were just a little chippy character. But yeah. also... You know, you could be like, oh, they're 10, but clearly they're doing things that an adult would do, like you said. So it could be 10, could be 13. You could really kind of make them whoever. 
but these kids are supposed to be 10 and going on adventures and responsibilities and taking all this stuff on, which is like, whoa, 10, really? But it's like, okay, maybe there's something else. But then they have the baby face and they do stuff that kids would do. And it's like, you can kind of, it feels like a little kid, like you sent your six-year-old off to go on like an adventure around the city. And I'm like, that kid needs supervision. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that kid it's, shouldn't be out there. Like, I, I get, I, I like the gameplay. I like the look of it. I like the idea of let's play imagination time in the city that you are used to. Um, it's just a little uncanny valley for me, the character models. And that's yeah. where I get turned off by it. I'm just like, eh, this is a little too weird. It just, yeah. it, it looks weird. And I know. yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about any <laughs> of it at this yeah. point. I know people are saying, you know, have an open mind, etc. And I do. Well, it's like we had frustrated, frustrated squirrel in our YouTube comments. So I'll call you out. <laughs> that it's, it's, it, you have to stop thinking this is so weird and that scares me and start thinking this is so weird and that intrigues me. And I thought that was interesting because I felt the same way. Uh, Matt was kind of like, this is throwing me off. It's a little too much. It's a little too in in like intense and colorful. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? This is the kind of game that if you give yourself over to it and you let it be weird, I think you could really enjoy barring the Uncanny Valley character models. That, to me, is still... I can't give over to that a little bit. It's a little too strange. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like they're not going to make any changes. They, It's, no. you know, Volition style. They're like, this is how we want the game to look. This is very intentional. I think, I think this game is going to be probably... I wouldn't say a huge hit in the U.S., but it's definitely going to yeah. be a hit. Big like, Korea. Um... They even mentioned that they put a lot of Korean cultural artifacts in there and a ton of references to Korean culture, and that's in there a lot. Um, so I feel like, you know, that they really are pushing for this to be a popular game in their home, home country. You know, you know this, this game kind of reminds me of MapleStory 2, and I had the same issue with MapleStory 2 because all the characters were chibi, and it was just weird. I was like, I, yeah. I don't like this art style. It's just the art style. It has nothing to do yeah. with the age of the kids. It's just the art yeah. style in the Uncanny yeah. Valley. Um, I also don't enjoy chibi character styles very much in almost yeah. anything. It doesn't it just, do it for me. No. But I think it's going to yeah. do well. I, I mean, it now, looks I, very polished. <laughs> if I if it's free to play in any way, I will definitely give it a go. The traversal looks incredible. Um, oh, yeah. And they mentioned that, too. It's like, uh, this was an interesting part from the developer walkthrough. They say... Um, do you ever, do you remember being a child and having a dream of like flying and like mm -hmm. feeling like you're Superman or something? And they said so that they really wanted the traversal to feel like that, like feel like you were having a dream as a kid and you could just do whatever. And so you can like, like swing from lightning bolts and you can fly in an umbrella and you can, and I'm like, that's cool. I love, again, just like the dedication to fun, to making it fun and whimsical and imaginative. And I really appreciate any developer coming out here and making something that isn't, you know, call of duty. Uh, I appreciate someone <laughs> making something a little weird and a little crazy, um, especially this because it looks so out there. Uh, and they're yeah. not afraid to kind of make it extremely Pokemon-esque in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, more Digimon-esque in the actual sense that, like, I feel like you have only, like, you don't have, like, a like hundred, you know, Doke Vs or whatever. Um, but you are intended to, like, uh, you know, go catch, like, these things at certain times and, and, and uh, to a degree I think I've seen. And so uh, it's interesting. Um, I I have big this is the best thing i've seen from this developer thus far it's cool to see them do something so different from something oh, yeah. like black desert or anything um i think so cool. i, I think it. this I, I, well, I think this game just isn't for us like it's not yeah, meant exactly. for us like this is it's, something I don't think that it's meant i would for western audiences in general i i'm not even saying western i think like our age group yeah. like it it's yeah. meant for lower age groups and you know that's great cuz honestly if we could get kids to stop playing Fortnite, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, and it has that kind of colorful, beautiful look. That, like, the only problem is this will not run on a Switch in a no. in hell. This will not run on not and not even Nintendo's next not even Nintendo's next next console will this thing run. Uh, I mean, I will say, you know, if you want to give a compliment to this game, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks in amazing. This, like, footage that they showed. It's one of the more beautiful games I've seen like ever. Yeah. Like the style is, they perfectly blended like the realistic style with like a, like a bit of a cartoony flair just to kind of make it a bit stylized. So it doesn't look so like, doesn't look dated too quickly. Really, really beautiful. Um, I can't, I, I honestly can't imagine what quite could, I'm sure like the, like PS5 series X could probably run it. 
um, yeah. decently. But, um, but yeah, interesting to interesting to see them not make. Uh, it's too bad it's not going to be probably something that can run on the Switch. Maybe it will though. Maybe they'll just do like a, a an uglified version, a Witcher three blocky <laughs> style version of Doke V on the Switch, uh, and have kids clapping and making tunnels. So. <laughs> all for it i'm positive about it I, I agree with you mike i think this is a game for kids and i think that's yeah. clearly what the developers want it to be in a game to play with your kids like we just talked about on the replay recently that uh but minecraft dungeon coming to steam and like i saw so many people saying oh i never played minecraft dungeons on my own but i played it with my kid and it was fun to play with my kid but it was a little shallow but like they wanted to play it and it was like oh you know it was a good way to play like a an arpg or something with my kid this kind of feels like that right it's like a fun game you could play with your kid that's colorful it's more it's more suited towards them, but there might be a little bit of like the fun that an adult could have too if you're playing it with a kid. Or yeah, so. and I think the color. Go find yourself a kid, and <laughs> and get in there. <laughs> no, uh, don't, don't do that. Condone, <laughs> we don't condone kidnapping. Go find a don't. kid that you are allowed to <laughs> take with you to play a game and uh, enjoy Dokev. <laughs> <laughs> I think the colorfulness alone speaks to this is for kids because even like I feel like any child that likes video games would you know want to try this game so yeah. looks like fortnite and not actually but like the colors and the yeah. and like the, the wild crazy stuff coming out of nowhere oh, it yeah. just feels like it, it taps into that fortnite vibe you totally nailed it i didn't even really think about like i know they talked about making it for kids but i didn't really think about it being primarily completely for kids but you're totally right that's exactly what this is yeah. It reminds me of like uh, how Matt Matt always mentioned he used to play Toontown online, the Disney MMO. Uh, oh yeah, no, kid. yeah. It's like yeah, definitely. And it's like I and, and that that was like yeah, that was a game they made for kids to play. Like there were Disney adults, and there was like enough gameplay to probably play if you weren't, uh, you know, a kid. But it was a kid game that you know was had elements from a, a bigger you know a MMO, like a genre that at that point really only had like pretty dark, gritty adult versions of games like Asheron's Call and stuff. Um, so it was cool to see, uh, and yeah, I feel like this is going to be more of the same, right? It's like can, a cool way to get into open world adventures. I can see this taking over the like uh, Outlander space, um, or the Skylanders. The, Skylanders, thank you. Skylanders. I was going to say Outlander. Outlander. Sasanak. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Skylander space, um, or the Disney version of it. Like I can see it replacing that. Yep. Uh, I agree. Especially if it's you know cost effective for parents and by cost yeah. effective i mean you Not don't have MTX. to f go f well i assume there are microtransactions in this no but i mean like but not own like like there's a way to play it without being bombarded well by microtransactions. just make it easier on the parents to swipe a credit card is what i'm getting at because i get you you don't have to f go physically buy a piece that they could then put on the pad yeah. you can just yeah, yeah, yeah. put your number in and there you go there's your whatever that's that you it. want so that's it I think, it, I think it's smart. If your child spending $1,000 on your credit card on Roblox, they can spend it on Dokev. <laughs> I think I'd prefer yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. If I me had too. to choose between I, the two. I do not. And I am completely, I do not understand the Roblox uh, obsession at all, but I'm sure I'm going to get flamed for that. So I have a huge appreciation for, for <laughs> the love and, and what they've created, but I do not. I am. I was too old. I am so confused about Roblox. Um, all right. That's a lot of hot takes today. Um, you can email us at ggreplayshow at gmail.com if you have any corrections. But also, if you just want to fight with us, if you have any uh, hot takes or you want to get any sort of commentary in there, um, definitely. Here's Mike's personal email. It is Mike, no, I was going to say, send no, them all send, to Paul. <laughs> yeah, send them all to ggreplayshow at gmail.com. Matt will have to read them. So uh, hopefully, yeah, we you won't. get some inflammatory emails uh, that Matt can get and be like, what did you guys talk about on that show? Um, um, all right, because he only listens to shows he's on. That's gonna. No, I'm kidding. It's so mean. I don't <laughs> have to do that at all. <laughs> he's never not been on an episode, so I, I can't confirm that actually. Yeah, that's um, true. All right. <laughs> that's true. He's. This is the first time Matt has missed a single Groofs content piece. All right. That is going to be it for GG Replay today, but don't leave just yet because I have a couple things to tell you about cool announcements. First off, we have a website. Did you know that? It's not really an announcement, but I, I wanted to trick you. <laughs> we have a website. It's called goodnightgroups.com. You can go there and we have this podcast. We have videos. We have blogs. We have all the links to our socials. We're on TikTok, y'all. So if you want to see us do a crazy dance... I mean, you, you can't see it on, we don't do them on TikTok, but, but maybe <laughs> if you go and you follow us, we might do a crazy dance. Me, mainly specifically me, 
Uh, anyway, um, all right. And uh, for those on the audio listeners, I tried to do a dance. Um, all right. We also <laughs> have a Patreon. So if this is really inspiring you to give us some money and feel generous uh, about our content, you think I'm I'm uh, a bit of a clown, then you know what? You can go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash goodnightgroofs. Um, and that will allow you to pay $1, $3, or $5. Uh, monthly the three dollar tier does get you early access to our all-encompassing gaming podcast game grooves where you can hear much more of mike since it's mainly me matt here you can hear much more (laughs) of mike on there and if you give us some money um i will say you might hear more of mike in general you know the the big thing about our patreon here is not so that we can fund our lives we have jobs we're doing what we gotta do but this uh this is so that we can make more content so we can have more time set aside a little bit more time uh to you know be able to get the resources to make more for you to enjoy at home uh and, and three dollars what a value three dollars is a great value three dollars a month is like almost nothing i will say it's like <laughs> less than a cup of coffee at starbucks and in addition you want to get a pumpkin spice latte this is cheaper than a pumpkin spice latte and i think um we are are better because uh you know more like a pumpkin spice natte am i right <laughs> i don't know what that means but anyway point being there's a lot of good value here with us um and uh yeah it, it, you know it's it's mainly just a nice generosity thing that we love to see and you know what if you have a dollar too that's fine we still have perks for everyone um you can get early access to talking to us you can get even quicker to our email um, we, will, we will we will get there. We will get there and we will listen to every mean thing you have to say to us about how we're wrong about DoKV. Um, <laughs> and also, if you're listening to this on a podcast app, pull over to the road. Pull over to the side of the road right now. Get on the soft shoulder. Put your hazards on and open up your phone so you can give us a five-star review or a thumbs up. Um, because that really, really helps us in the algorithm. We really, really appreciate it. Um, it doesn't even cost you any money, which is pretty cool. It might cost you car repairs if you pulled over really, really quickly when I screamed. Um, <laughs> but in general, um, you know, it's pretty good. It's it's one of your best value moves you can make uh, while making us smile. So we really, really appreciate it. And you know what? If you game, you're probably a groove. So we'd love to have you here uh, on a more permanent basis. Uh, Matt, do you have any? Or Matt, <laughs> so, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> got do my I have uh, anything <laughs> over here. Mike, do you have anything else to say before we head out for the end of the day? Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Like, hey. comment, and subscribe. <laughs> smash that like button. And if you know, if you can't find a like button, smash whatever button you see. Except unsubscribe. Do not, do not smash that button. Do not touch that. And if you already liked it, don't, don't press dislike. Don't press that button. All right, that is going to be it for Chi Chi Replay today for Friday, August 27th, 2021. Don't forget to listen to Game Grooves on Sunday uh, because that is when it normally comes out. We got a great episode for you. I'm not there, so that means it's even better, I'm sure. Like three Um, tiers higher. (laughs) Three tiers higher, absolutely. Um, And also, if you paid $3, then you can go listen right now to Game Grooves. So listen to that now as you head into the weekend. A lovely way to enjoy yourself after you already, uh, for some reason, aren't sick of us now great stuff Uh, and we'll be back on monday matt and i uh, with more gg replay until then good night groups